I never use PowerPoints to explain anything, <laughs> but uh, th this uh, this level of, of computer science-y vocabulary and to get a good understanding of what we're, we're talking about here, I think it actually, for, for the first time in a long time, required me to do some PowerPoint stuff. So let's dive into it. And I decided to do this video after a pretty successful social media post about graph theory and graph algor algorithms specifically for DevOps and platform engineers. And I do believe that this is going to be very important for us as, you know, software engineers, DevOps engineers, platform engineers. So why do you need to know this? Well, just before we move forward, I think that a good platform engineer and a good DevOps engineer is a good software engineer. That's my take on it. So when I say platform engineer, DevOps engineer, software engineer, I'm, I'm thinking about them all the same way. I'm just going to use platform engineer moving forward. So AI is the biggest thing right now. Uh, it's penetrating all areas of tech, right? Anything that we're doing, whether we're writing code, whether we're troubleshooting, looking at logs, uh, checking security vulnerabilities, AI is everywhere, all right? And as a engineer, right, as a platform engineer, we will continue to use AI tools, but more importantly, there's gonna be data that's sitting on the systems that we're managing, and we need to know how this data works. And I think as, you know, a standard like maybe cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, platform engineer, we sometimes think about data as like, okay, this thing is stored somewhere, right? Like it's it's persistent or maybe it's stateful uh, and it's, it's sitting somewhere. But data is <laughs> much more complex. Uh, and from a computer science perspective, we think about data from, you know, graph theory and graph algorithms, all right? Now, models... All right, LLMs, any LLM that you use, maybe you're using Claude or, or, or GPT or Gemini or whatever you're using, they're all comprised of data, all right? So the way that it works, very, very high level, of course, you have multiple data sets and these data sets could be anything from lists in Python to uh, CSVs, right? And you take all those data sets and you train them. And then when you train them, you turn it into a model, right? The training turns into a model, that model is then used. And then the concept, of all that, uh, but particularly around data-driven applications are what's behind ML and AI. So without understanding graph theory and graph algorithms, uh, it's going to be very, very cumbersome to get through for anybody in the platform engineering realm. And I'm going to be honest, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world, uh, but if I can do it, you can do it. So let's keep going. Let's talk about what a graph is. And I got a bunch of examples. I'm going to show some code. I'm going to give you some vocabulary. I'm going to break this all down in a simpler way than uh, maybe some other resources. Cause I've gone through a lot of different resources. I've done a lot of studies on this and uh, it, it, it can be cumbersome. All right. But I'm going to break it down. So data in a graph is represented and analyzed via relationships which we're going to talk about here in just a second. And graphs are how we represent and analyze the relationships within or between data, right? So what does this look like visually? Well, you have these little circles here, right? And you have all these lines and they're all kind of just like interconnected and, and going back and forth. And what does this mean? Uh, well, funny enough, it, it actually reminds me of uh, the Kubernetes logo, right? <laughs> but that's not what it is. It's not about Kubernetes, I promise. Uh, but we have these circles and we have these lines. What are these things? Well, the circles are nodes or sometimes they're called vertices, all right? And those are the data endpoints, okay? That's where the actual data exists, right? And then the lines or the edges that you see here, sometimes they're called lines, sometimes they're called edges. I think more professionally they're called edges, but like you'll you'll see, you know, uh, other people talking in different ways, right? That is the representation between nodes. And just a fun fact, they can also carry data, but that's not where the data is usually represented, okay? So again, those little circles, they are called nodes or vertices, and that's the data endpoints right? And then the lines or the edges, those are the lines between the nodes and the vertices. This is the representation between nodes. And again, like I said, these nodes um, are where the actual data exists. And then the lines or the edges are the relationships and the connections. Okay. A couple of examples here. 
And then we're gonna jump into some code. Social network data sets, right? Showing friendships between people. So if we look here, right, the data endpoints, you know, those are represented as the people, right? Maybe the social media profile. And then the edges, the lines, are how they're all interconnected. So like mutual friends, for example, okay? Movie actor data set, right? Shows actors who work together in movies. Same thing, you have the data, all right? Here's one actor, here's another actor, here's how they interconnect, right? Here, here's how they are connected. Transportation data shows the graphs between which cities to connect with. So like, let's say you have a, a train station A and then train station B, and the train goes from one city to another, from train station A to train station B. That's how it's connected, right? So again, the data in this case, right? So if we're looking at it from an application perspective would be the train stations, right? And then the line uh, is literally like the, the, the railroad, the, the railway. I don't, I don't know uh, the track, right? I think maybe that's what it's called. <laughs> the track is quite literally the line between the two data endpoints, right? And then web data set, the graph shows which pages to link to which pages. So again, right? Nodes, those are the data endpoints. Those are the circles here. The lines or the edges, right? This is the representation between the data. That's what these lines are here, okay? So let's jump into some code, see what it looks like programmatically. We have a class, right? It's called simple graph. And then we have a function called add edge. And this is with the notion that there are only two nodes, right? So two little circle thingies, right? And then we add those connections. We can also show the graph so show it visually show the representation you know like that screenshot that i showed with like the 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 circles and then the lines we can actually see how that data looks with real data right you can find the path between the two nodes so that that line right those edges and then this is how it would look if we went to go create it so we would add edges right which is the people right Alice, Bob, whoever, like, let's say we're, we're thinking about that social media stuff. And then you can actually show the graph as in show how they are connected, how the people are connected. And then you can find the paths between the people, just like we were talking about. And here's one representation to do that. So find the path between Alice and Eve. And then this one here says, find the path between Bob and Charlie. Now taking more of a harder example, right? Like let's say we're taking this whole social media thing right? You have a friendship graph <laughs> and uh, maybe I need to find one of these and you have add friendship as a one function and then you have a couple of people. So let's say you can add a friendship between two people, right? So that's the max. We're saying this is the max amount of people that we can add in this graph. You can also show all friendships. Again, same thing. You have this graph and you can see it visually. Find mutual friends. So what I can say here is, okay, I have person one, I have person two, are there any mutual friends between these people? And how is that gonna be represented? Well, remember, when we are creating a graph, right, we're adding edges. So these edges are, you know, data one, data two, et cetera, and there's all these edges connecting to all the nodes. So if you build it in that way, as in if you build the graph in that way, all the data can kind of see each other because it's all connected via the edges in some way, shape or form. That's how you can see the mutual friends. And then you can specify a data set. Like I said before, during the PowerPoint, a data set could be a CSV or it could be something as simple as a list like this in Python. All right, and then you have some functionality here to call upon the methods within the class. So for example, you can you know show all friends, you can show the mutual friends between Alice and David, for example. You can show the mutual friends between Bob and Eve. So this is a high level of what you can do to build your own graph and just kind of see how it works. Again, stuff like this, this is, uh, you know, if, if you don't have a degree in computer science or if you didn't study computer science in so, some way, shape or form, even outside of college, uh, this may be the first time that you're seeing something like this. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out because this is a very deep topic. Uh, now, there are a couple of books that I'll recommend and I will put them in the description of this video as well. Uh, there's some pretty heavy books, right? The one is a little bit shorter. Uh, the second one is a little bit longer, but way more, uh, 
lecture e in like it, it sounds like it's coming from a professor at a college uh so that might not be the best way that you learn sometimes it's not the best way that i learn and then there's one called designing data-driven applications which is uh I believe it's like 600 pages. So it's, and it's a heavy book to read, but it's very, very good. And I'll put those descriptions uh, or those links in the description.